Hi everybody, Ruth Fazal here, and I'm really excited to be able to share what uh, I'm going to share over these next three weeks as we focus on praying for Israel. And um, just so exciting that this is happening. And I think in many ways it's, um, it's a fulfillment really of why I'm here, um, but yet my journey has been a little bit different. And when I think about praying for Israel, I think about praying for all of Israel to move into the fullness of who they are and who they're called to be, and to pray in that kind of a way. And so I was thinking, what can I do? What can I bring that will be something unique to help to help you, to help all of us, to really focus our hearts in a biblical and meaningful way as we pray, praying out of God's word, um, not out of our own understanding or our own intentions, but really uh, praying out of his word and what he says. And as Mike Bickle always says, praying it back to him. So I, I love that aspect of it. So what I thought about was to ask Gil Penzak, who many of you know, um, and we've been working together, gosh, for almost uh, 10 years now, doing different things, traveling, um, hosting groups here in Israel, and hosting online uh, studies together. It's, um, it's been the most amazing journey for me, and definitely a deeper journey into God's word. And so I thought to myself, well, maybe, we could do some studies together, Gil and I, on Isaiah 62, and literally take it verse by verse. Because I know when we go verse by verse, verse often we, we, uh, we might study a chapter, but we skip over things. But if we go verse by verse, then we can really go into the depth, the depth of the words, um, the translation, the mistranslation, we can do all of those we can do all of those things and really go deeper into his word which will give her a deeper us a deeper understanding of uh, what we are what we are reading and what we are praying so that is the purpose of what uh, i suggested to gil we could do is to do a series of videos where we will just spend probably um, 20 minutes or so studying a verse and of course uh, it never stays in one verse it it goes takes us all over god's word but uh, as you'll see even in the first session which is coming up um, we we weren't even able to start at isaiah 62. the skill says well no you know in order to read isaiah 62 we have to read the last two verses of isaiah 61. so that's actually where this session starts we will do uh, enough of these sessions. There are 12 verses in Isaiah 62. So there will definitely be 12 sessions. And I am putting them, I'll be putting them up on a page on my website. And if you are wanting to stay in touch with that, then just go to my website, ruthfazal.com, and you'll see how to do that. And there's a, there'll be a special a special area where you'll be able to access these videos, which will be up on YouTube. But if you go to that particular area, you will be able to be in touch with it all the time and know when things are going up. Okay, so bless you all. And I really hope that you will enjoy this uh, first session together with Gil. It's uh, always amazing to study together as a believer in Yeshua and as an Orthodox Jew, not a believer in Yeshua, and yet we find this place in God's heart together. And I really just pray that this will encourage you as you pray and inspire you as you pray to maybe find a way into God's heart in a very, um, in a very deep way. So bless you all and uh, see you in the video. Bye bye. Come in.
עובדות לאדונה. הוא זומר לי שלך עליון, והגיד בבוקר חסדך, ואמונך בלילות. טוב להודות לאדוני, הוא זומר לשמך עליון, עלי עשור ועלי עיניו, עלי היגיון. So here we are. Uh, I'm Ruth, this is Gil, and as I explained in the introduction, that we are going to be doing a series over the, over the three weeks of the, of the 21 day fast. And um, we're going to cover uh, Isaiah 62 in maybe different ways than, than that you, you might have the opportunity to do in another way. So uh, Gil, let's uh, open up. Thank you. Well, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, thank you and thank everybody. I mean, for those uh, for these uh, three weeks of praying. I mean, I understand that the prayers are going to be you know interceding for for Israel yeah. for uh, for Jerusalem, and um, I mean, I, I I can't describe it enough. You know what it does in 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 my heart to know that there are people out there. You know, not necessarily from the Jewish people, uh, being willing to to fast and to pray. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, over the course of of three weeks, nonstop. Uh, for Israel, for Jerusalem, it means a lot, and I, um, I, I deeply thank every anybody who is uh, who is doing that, and um, and I also um, I also want to say that I'm honored. I mean, I'm honored to 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 to, to have the ability to maybe share a few things, and to, and for us to to think about it together. You know, when we study a scripture, it's not just uh, we don't just teach something which is external to us. It's not like teaching math or or teaching English or teaching anything anything like that it's something it, it it's i mean you are in the journey i mean as you are talking about it you're in the journey so we're and so and it basically means that we're we're diving into the scriptures together um into this uh, this chapter in isaiah chapter 62 uh which which makes a lot of sense in terms of of of, of praying you know thinking about this passage for three weeks um but yet we we always have to realize that that, that anything that, that we find in the prophets, for example, it, it has roots. Any passage would have roots, you know, elsewhere. And, and, and there, are, there are many, many, many dots uh, being placed all throughout scriptures um, in, in the various books, in various times. It's, I mean, you know, the word of God is infinite. It has no uh, restriction of time. Time doesn't, uh, doesn't restrict it in any way. Um, and, and it's up to us to do, to do a deep study and connect the dots as much as we can, mm-hmm. and those dots will eventually depict uh, um, a, a more full picture, a, a fuller picture, a, a, a bigger picture, a, a clearer picture about what God uh, is saying to us through these verses. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm honored, and thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you for doing um, this. So Isaiah 62. I mean, it's actually it's it's quite uh, funny because uh, we, I mean I mean Isaiah 62. Uh, it doesn't start in 62. It starts at the end of 61. Mm-hmm. I mean, at the end of uh, of chapter 61, we have two verses, verse 10 and verse 11. I hope we have the same number numbers of verses. Yes. Uh, we have two verses there that really opens up the whole uh, the whole topic of chapter 62. And and often we find that with Isaiah. Isaiah was is a super gifted writer i mean he had he had i mean the, the kind of hebrew that he's using the kind of of of, of metaphors and, and and poetic you know decorations for mm-hmm. for the words of the prophecy it's i mean he's one of a kind really in that regards it's mm-hmm. it's like reading poetry quite often and uh, and he has all these these uh, uh, literary artistic uh, means of um of of writing um, that that really characterize that really characterize the book. One of the things is that he, sometimes he would end a chapter already in the topic of the next one, uh-huh. and it's kind of like it's it's like in the following. You know, it's like it's like, it's like stay with us in, for the next chapter in Isaiah, and um, and and it's beautiful to 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 always make these connections. And and so, so the introduction to the to chapter sixty two is actually at the end of chapter sixty one. Um, let's read. The right. What, verse 10 and 11? Yes, verses okay. 10 and 11 in 61. In 61. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He's covered me with the robe of righteousness. 
as a bridegroom decks himself with ornaments, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its bud, as the garden causes the thing that is sown in it to bring, spring forth, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring forth before all the nations. Okay. Um, so, uh, uh, we, we begin with glad, we, we, with gladness, we begin with joy, right? I, uh, it's, I mean, the, the, the verb there is, when, uh, in order, to, in order to, create, to reinforce the meaning of the verb, we would duplicate it in Hebrew. Mm -hmm. So Isaiah is saying, sos asis, mm -hmm. okay? La, so, la sus, that would be like to rejoice or to have joy and to be glad in a very deep, in a very strong way. And he's saying, sos asis badonai. So surely I will do that, but it's like, I will gladly be glad if, yes. so, so if, if you want something similar to that in English, mm -hmm. which you understand why they didn't write it like that in the English version of the Bible. But, but, but I, will, I, will, I, will, um, I will be utterly glad that he's saying it's a very, it's a very strong feeling, very strong sense of, of joy. And then he says, my soul will, uh, will rejoice in my God. Uh, uh, the, we, have, we have various words for the word soul. I mean, if you're going, if you're now stepping into a place of uh, of prayer and, and worship, it's maybe 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 that's it's, it could be could be a point to think about. We have various layers of of the soul. We have we have a few um, say versions of one soul. We have the soul. We have one soul which is called nefesh, and the nefesh that's the most basic form of our soul. Nefesh is something that animals would have have as well, right? It's it's the thing that keeps us going. I mean, the nefesh carries our instincts. I mean, you know, we're hungry, we go to eat, and we are tired, we would like to sleep. And if we are uh, afraid, maybe we would run away, or maybe we will attack. This is the nefesh. Nefesh is a very animalistic form yes. of our soul. We have a few others. The highest form of the soul, of the soul is called neshama. I'm afraid that if you, if, you, if, you, if you go to any online dictionary or any book and you would look up the word soul, you would, I mean, I mean, if you look up the various words in Hebrew, you would see that it would, all, it would always give you the word soul in English. I mean, English doesn't enable um, enough, it doesn't make enough room for the various words. Mm. We have nefesh, the, the animalistic one. The highest one is called neshama. Neshama is, is the thing that really takes us to God. I mean, it, it, neshama it takes, you know, our animalistic uh, uh, behaviors. It takes our uh, dreams and ambitions and, 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 and desires and creativity. And, and surrenders it all to God. This is really the link between us and him as our maker. That's the neshama. Here we find that it is the nefesh. It's the most basic, the most animalistic version of the soul, which will rejoice in, in, in Elohim. Mm. It's even that. It's not the neshama which we could have expected. You know, neshama, of course, it's always connected to God. Even, even below that, we have a, a, the part of our soul called ruach, spirit. Of course connected but no it's the nefesh it's the most animalistic the most it's it's the, it's the most earthy uh, part in our existence and that part will rejoice in in elohim understand it in order to teach us how imminent how dominant and how how meaningful this this joy will be it will if it if it takes the nefesh to a place of rejoicing in the in, in god in elohim then prop then in, inevitably, the entire your entire existence is is all in it. Mm. And when we pray, and when we live, when we stand before Him, we we it's it's good to think about you know, which part am I using right now? Okay, am I am I praying from from the nefesh, which is a very early place, or am I praying from the ruach, which is a bit higher, the spirit? Maybe am I praying from the neshama, which is the direct link? Where am I found in my in my in in my standing before Him? Mm. How close am I right now to him? How conscious am I in terms of, mm. of what of where he is in my life? So so tegel nafshi be'elohai, and then we uh, we see that this joy comes from a very from a, a very specific uh, reason. There is righteousness. There is salvation and righteousness coming to light. Okay, he clothed me with clothes of salvation. He he's um, dressing me up mm. or clothing me. With a, with a coat of righteousness, mm. okay? The coat is something that comes right. on top. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but here it's like a coat, and the coat in Hebrew is, is, is the word is me'il, mm. something that comes me'al, on top. It's, it, this is all you can see. 
as if salvation, these are the clothes, but it's not something to be seen on the outside. What's being seen on the outside is, is the coat, right? If I'm wearing something, but I'm covering myself with a coat, you can't see what I'm wearing. What, whatever it is that I'm wearing is private. It's intimate. Salvation is more intimate. It's an, it's an, in, it's, it's an intimate process. Yet righteousness is the thing that covers it all. This is what people can see from the outside. And we will see this division in, uh, of righteousness and salvation. We will see it also in chapter, uh, in chapter 62. And that's why we said that this is the introduction. Right. This is the way to go into 62. So, so already we see here that the, this, the, this the division between righteousness and salvation. Salvation more like the basis but righteousness covers it all. And this is the thing which is seen to the outside. Mm. Like a groom or as a, a bride. As a bridegroom decks himself with ornaments, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. Okay, so, 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 these, so righteousness and salvation will be something that we will use, we will minister with them. Here it says that like a groom minister, ministering. I mean, he's ministering with, with majesty. Okay, mm. like he's with glory. And, and, and like a bride putting on her jewels, okay, putting on her jewels so that everybody can see this is more, this is more like the, you know, this is really the, the righteousness, yes. you know, with the jewels, so everybody can see. But a groom ministering with, right, with, with, with glory or with majesty, we understand that is more related to salvation. It's interesting because, I mean, here it's, as a bridegroom decks himself with ornaments, which also has... Like decorates himself yeah, with things that like people can see. Yeah. Not necessarily in Hebrew. Not, not necessarily in the way that it's written in Hebrew. Right. So we have so we have salvation and righteousness. We have a bride and a, we have a, a groom and a bride mm -hmm. and their actions. And we see this division. You know, this matter, this um, uh, image right. continuing to take us on to, uh, to take us on with mm -hmm. the, with the chapter. Right. As the land. For as the earth brings forth its bud. As the garden. Okay, I'm not sure about. The, uh, here, it's important to say, the land bring brings forth its plant, and and, and it, it's a, there. There is a reason why 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 we why we linger on this because because Isaiah is teaching us in 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 various places in the book, he's teaching us that Mashiach, Mash, the Messiah, he is like a plant. Yes, he's a plant growing. Yes. Okay. Behold, I am sending you my servant plant. <laughs> he says. Okay. I know that it I, I, probably in English it says might be a, a maybe a shoot or a, a shoot. branch. Yes, a shoot shall come out. Of but it's not. It's a plant. It's a plant. And there is there is a lot of teaching around the plant. The plant, in order to 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 grow, first there is a seed, and that seed must go under the ground. It goes into a dark place. It goes to a place of death. It goes to a place of being rotten. Mm -hmm. rotten? Mm -hmm. um, no, it, it, to a place of disrespect. We step on it. We step on it, not, not, not realizing that it's there. We step on it. But what do we do when we step on it? We, we, we press the ground. We press the soil you know, around. We actually make it grow better right? when we step on it. When we disrespect it, so to speak, we make it we make it come out faster and better. It's it's a very dark place. There is no there is no sunlight. Okay, it's not a good place to be in. Yet these are the circumstances. That's these are the conditions you need in order for that seed to grow and for a plant to to to, to come out from it. This mm -hmm. is where a new life comes from, from a place of darkness, from a place of, of affliction, of difficulty, of disrespect. It's not a comfortable place to be in, yet that's the way to go. Mm. The, the plant grows and the whole process of it, of it growing is gradual. Redemption or Mashiach coming is not something to happen overnight. It's not going to happen overnight, boom, we're all changed, we're all saved, boom, and that's it, okay? I'm speaking Christianese here, we're all saved. But, <laughs> but, but, but Mashiach, coming, Mashiach coming is a gradual process in which we need to work very hard very hard and we have to be very patient and very worthy all the time and and, and, ex and expecting we have to be in expectation mm -hmm. at all times so it's important to read it as the way that it is that the land will bring the land brings forth 
it's planned. Mm. That's it's about it's about the savior. It's about the, the it's about Mashiach. So that's a real hint, rather. Than just, oh, very much. I mean, because just Isaiah. About, oh, yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. And as a garden, as the garden causes the things that are sown in it to spring forth. Mm -hmm. And again, to spring forth in Hebrew comes from the word plant, tzemach. Mm. Tzemach is a plant. So we say ki ka'aretz totzi tzimcha. It's plant. Uchegana mm. zeruah tatzmiach will plant forth. Okay, right. it's the word plant coming to us again. Interesting. And we can, uh, so is so the Lord God. So the Lord God will cause righteousness. Will plant forth yatzmiach. You see, in one verse you have this root repeating three times. Mm. The root of it being like a plant. Wow. Will plant forth righteousness and praise to spring forth. Plant forth. <laughs> plant forth. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> to spring forth before all the nations. Okay. And here, before all the nations, and I think that's the key thing to understand, it says against all the nations. Now, again, it, the word is neged in Hebrew. The word neged might, uh, it has the meaning of against, and it could also be in front of. Mm -hmm. Okay, in front of or it's before. Like, yeah, like. Right. And it's ambiguous. And whenever we see ambiguity in Hebrew, especially with Isaiah, we have to take it very seriously. It, sometimes we have three meanings to one word, and Isaiah is using the word deliberately. He wants us to think about it. Mm -hmm. He wants us to think about who are those nations. There, there are nations, that, or there will be nations, that, 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 that the whole thing that we are reading about, about salvation and righteousness, be seen. We have nations that will be before them. They will be able to see that. There is no mm -hmm. battle. Mm -hmm. But there will be nations, Isaiah is saying, that this, these salvation and righteousness will be against them. And, we, and it's not the first time we see division amongst the nations. In Song of Songs, we see that. We mm -hmm. see the daughters of Jerusalem being like the nations. Okay, the nation. Jerusalem in Song of Songs represents the world. The daughters of Jerusalem are the nations living in the world. And they are the bride's most, they're, they're her closest friends. They share, she shares her most intimate secrets with them. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what he what's he like. Go and find him for me. Tell him that I'm lovesick. Yeah. But the nations could also be the watchmen on the walls who 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 beat up the bride and they leave her naked and vulnerable on the streets. What so there are nations going this way, there are nations going the other way. And that's why the ambiguity in the word naked, it could be against all the nations, those nations who choose to be the watchmen on the walls who are going against the bride. But it could also be in front of all the nations, mm -hmm. those who choose to be like the daughters of Jerusalem, uh, uh, with whom she shares her secrets. And I think this introduction is very important because it, it, it gives us the ability to think about salvation and righteousness. And it gives us the ability to think about gradual processes and God's timing in the process. Mm -hmm. And also, and, and, and I think most of all, it, it opens up the whole discussion about the role of the nations in regards to, um, to, the, to, the, state, to, to the people of Israel, to the nation of Israel. So that's just um, the, wow. our introduction. It's a great introduction. Thanks so much. Thank so you. we'll continue when we start, when we meet again, we'll, we'll be going right into Isaiah 62 yes. and uh, just taking it probably verse by verse and finding what's there, but yes. beyond the words. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> okay. God bless Great. you all. Bless you all. Bye-bye.
טוב להודות לאדוני. עלה השובע, עלה הנבל, עלה היגיון. שמחתני אדוני ופעולך במעשה ידיך אענה מה גדלו מעשיך אדוני מאדם כור מחשבותיך טוב להודות לאדוני הוא זמר לשמך עליון להגיד בבוקר חסדך ואמונתך בלילות טוב להודות לאדוני הוא זמר לשמך Don't